This episode of the Stephen King Movie Club is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the leading provider in audio content on the web. They have thousands and thousands of audiobooks to choose from, including Stephen King's newest audiobook, Mile 81. You can get a free audiobook download right now by going to audiblepodcast.com slash skfancast and signing up for your free trial. Ben Mears has been away too long. And now at last, he's come home. The men fought at Valley Forge. Daddy, come back safe. Home to the childhood memories, to the old familiar faces, to a life unmolested by time. And with your saints, let him rejoice in your presence forever. We ask it through Christ our Lord, amen. Home to Salem's Lot, a town too good to be true. What was that? Did you happen to notice the time when the boys left? We shouldn't have gone through the woods. It's a shortcut. Well, they should have been here half an hour ago. Wait! Danny, wait! Something is happening. Something terrible. Henry! Where's Ralph? Ralph. Oh. Where's your brother? Once the kid disappears, then this. You're not leaving Salem's lot, are you? I'm not leaving. Don't you understand what's happening? Do you? Yes, I do. It's in the Marston house. Good evening. I dreamed. You slept there all night? Yeah. A little tired. Didn't sleep much last night. I was dreaming. Somebody out there. Sweet. Sweet dreams. I let him in. Oh, it's only all just happened since... Since I came here. It wasn't a dream. Stop, holy man! You can do nothing against the master. They're debris on one another. The vampires are creating vampires. The master wants you. It's a geometric progression. Two times two times four times eight. There's a dead man upstairs. Bill! You know, you know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Look at me. Ned Tebbett's body has disappeared from the morgue. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Bill! <laughs> And Susan's in there! Run! No! Look at him! Stephen King, the best-selling author of Carrie and The Shining, takes you on a startling journey to Salem's Lot. Welcome to another episode of the Stephen King Movie Club. On this episode, we'll be talking about Salem's Lot. Before I get going, I want to apologize for how I sound. I've come down sick, but the show must go on. Needless to say, this episode's a little clip-heavy. Usually at this point, I would do a short synopsis, but I found that ancient trailer for the movie and figured you would enjoy watching that a little more than just watching me tell you about the movie. It does a pretty good job of covering the bases, so I'll let it stand. I like Salem's Lot. Once you get past the fact that the movie is actually older than I am, it really is great. That being said, we should probably mock parts of it because of its age and out-of-date effects. example of out-of-date effects that I am so glad have died, and we should never see it again. See, what's the deal with going all freeze framey and then zooming in? I don't, I don't really get it. I don't understand why this effect is used. I thought YouTube had stopped a buffer when I was watching it. Um, 
Uh, although it does remind me. Does this look remind anyone of Simon Pegg's little buddy from the most recent Star Trek movie? The hard-working, equally starving staff the officer had earned? Me. Get it! Shut up! Moving on. Here's a scene that confused me. Why do rats in this movie sound like dolphins? I guess it could be that gopher from Caddyshack. Maybe they were going for a higher pitched version of that funny noise the singer from Disturbed makes. The point being, the rats sound like a lot of things in this movie, and none of them are actually rats. You could have a better rat voice by just having a dude sit off camera and do like a voiceover rat sound effect thing rather than the sound clips they used. Uh, interesting bit of information, vampires have not changed in at all in the 57 years between Nosferatu and Salem's Lot. <laughs> I guess it is better than the vampires we see nowadays though. At least they made an attempt to make vampires look scary back then. Not all emo and horny like they are now. Um, well, I just want to try one thing. Here it is, she's going down. Just stay very still. Run, get out of the, why are you in the room with him? Don't move. He's going to bite her. There's no question. He's definitely going to bite her. Any minute now. Really? Bite her already! Does he at least, like, accidentally cut her tonsils or anything? Now, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. Um, but I still like it. Although I was surprised that Father Callahan didn't have a bigger role in the movie. Maybe I'm just so used to the huge part he played in the Dark Tower novels, so I was expecting to see more of him in the lot. Anyway, that was my thoughts on Salem's Lot. There's a newer version that came out in 2004, but I haven't seen it because I generally despise remakes. But now that I've rewatched this version, I kind of want to see the new version as well. Interesting point. Salem's Lot, both the 1979 and 2004 versions, are available in their entirety on YouTube, and I've organized them into YouTube playlists for you. You can find links to the playlists below this video if you're watching on the blog or YouTube. And if you're not watching on the blog or YouTube, you should probably go there. Before I go, I want to know what movie you think should be on the next episode of the Stephen King Movie Club. Let me know by leaving a comment on Facebook, Google+, iTunes, or YouTube. Or by checking into the Stephen King Fancast on GetLoo. Or tweeting your suggestions to at SKFancast on Twitter. Make sure you hashtag SKMC if you are using GetGlue, Google+, or Twitter. Links to all those pages are available on our blog at skfancast.wordpress.com. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Stephen King Movie Club. Long days, pleasant nights.